I would argue that the president has unleashed is partially, again, not in any way totally, but partially to blame for demons that have been unleashed, whether it's what I saw at a senior center back home and people saying F you and F you and F you to each other at a senior center, a retirement center, where they're going to see each other playing croquet the next day. The fact that, you know, you've got the top guy saying, well, I wish I could hit you in the face, and if not, why don't you and I'll pay your legal fees, that's bizarre. We ought to call it as such. And what I've said, you know, back home, when some of these people have been, frankly, weird and different in a town hall meeting, I said, what is going on? And they'll say, look, if the guy at the top can say anything to anybody at any time, why can't I? That was Republican Congressman Mark Sanford on Morning Joe exactly one year ago this Friday. While the South Carolina conservative largely backed the president's agenda, he also called out the commander in chief, as we just heard right there. Last night, Sanford lost his primary race after the president attacked him personally on Twitter just hours before the polls closed, and it was close. Welcome to Morning Joe, everyone. It's Wednesday, June 13th. With us, we have MSNBC contributor Mike Barnacle, national affairs analyst for NBC News and MSNBC John Heilman, former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner, and president of the Council on Foreign Relations, author of the book A World in Disarray, Richard Haas. Also with us, NBC News national political reporter Heidi Prisbella. A lot to get to this morning. Yeah, and uh, so if you want to know, uh, uh, where the Republican Party is right now. John yeah. Heilman, um, Mark Sanford, yeah. survives a uh, career ending, yeah. uh, what should have been a career ending scandal. Yeah. Uh, uh, as governor, lies about going on the Appalachian Trail, yeah. becomes the butt of late night jokes. Yeah. Nobody said that guy would ever yeah. be elected back to Congress, and he won. Yeah. Two years later, he votes with Trump maybe 95% of the time. Not quite, but close. 87, close. 87 I believe. 87% says one or two things yeah. about Trump that people don't like. Up with his head. And is so conservative, yeah. conservative, really yeah. conservative, not a Trumpist, mm. so conservative that even the Freedom Caucus yeah. said we would not have passed the tax cuts without yeah. Mark. There is no more conservative person on protecting uh, tax dollars balancing the budget, paying down the debt. It's been, Mark's, that's been Mark's sole yeah. obsession since 1994. But primary voters are like, no, nah, no, nah, you know what, we don't care that he's like one of the most conservative people in, in Congress. He said one or two bad things about Trump. Yep. It's, uh, well, look, there are two things to say. There are a lot of things to say about this, but the two. How, why don't mind. we just start to say it, it, it has devolved into a cult. That, well, that's Primary the, the first, voters the, in the Republican Party have devolved into a Trumpist cult. Right. Well, it's, a, it's, it's clear that conservatism, liberalism, voting records, none of those things matter. It is a cult of personality, and the president has an extraordinary hold over his base. And cult of personality is one good uh, description for it. The second thing is, for all of the people out there, including at various times everyone at this table and me, all of us who've sat and said, why is it Republicans are afraid of Donald Trump? Why do they not, why do they, cross, why will they never cross him? Why he never repays their loyalty? He's terrible. He's this, he's right. that. They should all have the courage of their convictions and stand up to him. This is a good example. Because Mark Sanford didn't really even stand up to him. He just made a couple of snotty comments about him. And Trump brings the wrath of Trump upon the guy and he loses his job. Now, I would, and probably everyone here would say, you should take a stand for what you believe in and, have, and, and be willing to lose your job. But nonetheless, the fact is that if you get on the wrong side of Donald Trump, his power over his base is significant enough that he can kill you regardless of how conservative your voting record is, regardless of your history in the Republican Party, regardless of your ideology, regardless of everything else. If he wants to put a target on your back, he can and will. Well, this is, this is not, uh, Mika, uh, it's just not, we've said it before, but let us say it again, using this as an exclamation mark. Um, the, the Republican Party is not a conservative party. Right. It's, it's not conservative uh, intellectually. It's not conservative fiscally. Temperamentally. It's, it's not conservative temperamentally. Uh, you, you look at everything that whether you can go back to, from Edmund Burke through Russell Kirk. Uh, you, you, can, you can go through William F. Buckley straight into Ronald Reagan. What's happening today is an aberration of all of those things. And that's fine, but I just, 
I wonder where conservatives go now. Well, they're too frightened to actually express themselves. Yeah. The difference between Mark Sanford and the rest of the Republican actual conservatives in the party is that Mark Sanford will be okay today. If, if that's what it takes, if, if, if he has to lose yeah. his reelection in order to remain a conservative and stay true to the policies uh, that he believes in, um, so be it. That is Mark Sanford. He is definitely a, you know, flawed. He's had his problems, and he took his knocks. But I will tell you, this is the kind of conservative that is missing in Washington today, someone who can yeah. stand up. You all will go down together. Yes, you will. Uh, because yes, you, you don't will. have backbones, you don't have a moral compass, and you don't know how to stand up to the ideals that you say you believe in. He is. He's losing his reelection because of it. But he's standing up for what is right. For what he's what, for what he's fought for. For what he believes. For 25 years. I may not agree. Here's what Mark told me last week. I was on a phone call with him, and you know, if if you know Mark, you know, he's he's never nervous. He's just not. And he, I said, "What's it like out there, man?" And he was laughing. He said, "Joe, it's bad." I'm saying the same exact thing. I was saying 25 years ago, I'm going to conservative town hall meetings talking about free trade, and they're calling me disloyal. I'm going out talking about balanced budgets and entitlement reform and saving our economy for the future, and people are there screaming, support your president. Mm -hmm. he, and for him, it was like he was, he didn't say this, but I am. It would be like you were transported to that movie, Idiocracy, where you're saying this, water grows grass, mm. not federally funded Gatorade, water grows grass. And yet the very same things that he's been saying that he stood for for 25 years on fiscal conservatism that I stood for, suddenly that's out of vogue because the emperor who has no clothes says that's out of vogue. But the emperor has this incredible ability to mobilize his grassroots, his core. You know, look, we have a president who's done something unusual. Instead of trying to broaden his appeal, he's narrowed his appeal, and he's played to his base, and he's tried, to, and he's created this group of people who will follow him anywhere. And look, I know Mark Sanford. His first wife worked for me, actually, and I was, I think I may have even given to his first campaign. I'm uh, embarrassed to say, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but well, no, no, you actually, you know, the funny thing is you shouldn't be embarrassed to say that because you fight for long-term, you know, yeah, saving the country true. from dread, yeah, debt yeah. relief. That was what drove Mark DeCon I remember the first day I met, met him, 1994, he was talking about entitlement reform. Yeah, no, he was absolutely right on that. But just the only thing I'd say is I think there are some true conservatives in Washington. I think they're hiding under their desks. They're yes, afraid they to are. come out. It's so embarrassing. They're afraid to say anything. They, they're going along with a lot of these fiscally irresponsible bills that are coming before Congress because they're afraid of Donald Trump and they're afraid of those tweets and they're afraid of what would happen in a primary. Yeah, well. This is just the latest example, the, the pointed example of why nothing has happened in immigration, nothing has happened on a whole range of issues because of fear, yeah. the fear of Donald Trump's tweets. Oh. So, so he, let's, let's play a game we played during the, the fall of 2015 when everybody was saying that Donald Trump was at three or four percent was never going to hold up papers would say this is the day Donald Trump's at like 5%, he's at 10%, but is, you know, don't worry, your ceiling's 15 and he'd keep going above that. So we're gonna do this today. Today's June 13th, 2018. I'm gonna hold this paper up, and, and just remember, here we are, uh, June the 13th, 2018. Uh, what Republicans did last night, and what they are doing in subservience to Donald Trump, is going to lead to a massive democratic wave this fall. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe the short-sightedness, and I will say the political stupidity and the radicalism and, and, and the turning away from rock-solid conservative values that have moved this party forward uh, starting in 1980, uh, if, you don't, if you don't believe me, Let's just see what happened in Virginia last night. Okay, you want to because, do that? Because in Virginia last night, well, I, Democrats, if you heard happy days are here again blaring out of Democratic <laughs> headquarters, there's a reason, because last night, 
Democrats got him another seat in the United States Senate because of what Repu what not Republicans, I don't even call them Republicans anymore. What Trumpists, what Trumpists did in the state of Virginia. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.